Greetings, this is Gerd Leonhardt from Basel, Switzerland, Futurist, CEO of the Futures Agency. A quick introduction to our event on November 5th in Sao Paulo at the Museum of Sound. This will be a great pleasure to, to see you there. So here's a couple of thoughts of what I'm going to talk about then. Uh, and here are the details. I think you can find it, find it on the website uh, at uh, gamesforchange.com, .org rather, I think. But in any case, I hope to see you there. And my work as a Futurist is about foresight. It's not about prediction. So what I'm going to share with you our foresight is developed about um, uh, looking into the topics of my work. They're not actually predictions, and uh, I don't really like the term predictions. I prefer to call this a foresight work, and I hope I can share some foresights with you then. Um, my, latest, my next book is going to be called uh, From Ego to Ego, and part of the conversation that we're going to have at this event is about this meme, From Ego to Ego, becoming a global meme, and, and this is a good thing. But uh, the topic is kind of difficult, actually, when you think about the ramifications of it, that business as we know it is broken, and that we have to reboot how we do stuff. Uh, do stuff in a very, very basic way. Uh, global warming, as Al Gore has said, you know, it's clearly the biggest market failure in history. And so we have to ask a question, can this problem be solved by a free market capitalism, by turbo capitalism, as we as we call it uh, in America. You know, I live in Switzerland. I'm not American, but I spend a lot of time there. So global warming is a big issue, but not only that, but also in media we have the issues. I mean, basically, as, as um, John Elkin says in his book, The Zero Notes, which you can see here, it's a great book I recommend. It says a world of 9 billion people will demand, fund will demand fundamental different changes in our mindsets and uh, the way we look at stuff. And this is the discussion that we're going to have at this event. How can we shift from an ego system, from an economy to an economy? I think this is the crucial question. Uh, you know, if you're looking at what, what's happening with our, with our thought patterns being sort of aligned with industrial things and industrial era things like perpetual growth and profits and, and now all of a sudden the internet and of course the environment is forcing us to think of this more of an ecosystem, uh, a connected interdependent system. And this may probably uh, mean the rebooting of capitalism, uh, not in the sense of, of the alternative, which may be some people think about socialism, but rebooting capitalism in a sort of natural way, what people call natural capitalism or sustainable capitalism, if, if that even is feasible. I mean, what we're seeing in Brazil, of course, is that many symptoms of uh, that capitalism are rampant also in Brazil, but but uh, all over the world, including deforestation and, and the selling of natural resources. So responsible capitalism, natural capitalism, how do we do this? I think basically business as usual is dead. And that uh, even as the, uh, the UN Gen Secretary General says, Ban Ki-moon, the old model of economic development and growth is a suicide pact. A global suicide pact, and this has quite clearly become the truth, as David Corton reinforces over at the S Magazine, is basically uh, opposed to the biosphere, and it's a suicide economy. So, how do we build a new economy? What is the question? Uh, and and uh, Tim O'Reilly, as a publisher, has a great example. Says if you take out more than you put in, the ecosystem eventually fails, and and this is very true about record labels, as you can see here. That ecosystem is completely dysfunctional, and it's true about oil. When you're talking about oil companies and what people do with energy resources. I think we're moving from independence to interdependence. There's a great movie you have to watch by Tim, Tim, uh, Tiffany Schlein called Connected the Movie. And interdependence means creating an ecosystem that works for all of the parties or it does not work at all. Like I think YouTube versus MTV shows the example that I'm talking about here, uh, even though YouTube is far from being the perfect interdependent ecosystem uh, at this point. But it, it's pointing in the right direction as opposed to centralized television. The music business I talked about earlier is just like the energy business. And it's kind of uh, bizarre to, to see that people are still saying, you know, we're, we're not ready for that shift because, you know, we want to amortize our old investment. And, and uh, you know, we want to keep people have people buying CDs or downloads or, of course, oil. Right? So uh, we're moving to a biosphere, not a myosphere. And I think this is very true, as you can see in this thing I found on Tumblr. Uh, fortunate I found this. I have no idea where it came from, but obviously people have been thinking about this. A biosphere in technology, in media, in arts, in society, not a myosphere. This is a substantial difference. I think pretty much our only way forward is the creation of this biosphere. And to my view, Brazil could take a leadership position in this, uh, in creating a, a, a collective and, and a commons approach that we're seeing. I mean, clearly, we're going to need new energy ecosystems, new money ecosystems, new media ecosystems, 
and a new ecosystem for education. That's based on on, uh, on zero cost of distribution that the internet affords us, but also uh, creating an ecosystem of values. And this is very, very important. You know, they look at this long list of what the ego from eco is going to entail. Distributed media, real time, invented anywhere, crowdsourcing, shared open, hyper collaboration. It's about nodes and not pyramids. I mean, all these things we'll talk about at the event. Uh, obviously, we'll be there for two days. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but the limitations of the industrial age of stuff, uh, they're gone now. I mean, we don't actually need physical products anymore for media. This is very good news for creators, in my view. But of course, now we have to think about what it actually means to, to live in the age of ubiquity, not the age of scarcity as the little fish is looking for the bait, you know, that is distribution. That is going to radically change. And I, th I think this is so true also for energy. Right? Distributed energy is the way forward, the future of business is a decline in empires and the rise of networks. And that is inevitable. I mean, not not just with Facebook, but, you know, all businesses, especially B2B, for example, LinkedIn is becoming the, the primary place of hiring now. It's going to be mind boggling, uh, the decline of empires and the rise of networks. And that is uh, something I think that we're seeing everywhere, behavior change in mobile technologies, using what, what's called the uh, the personal tracking and the uh, uh, the idea of, of creating a quantified self and so on. I mean, this is going to be very interesting. Social media is enabling us to interconnect this way, especially in Brazil, which is crazy about Twitter. I think number two on Twitter or number one even on Twitter. Uh, I think we're sort of on our way to a global pr brain, finding ways to recycle and activism on social networks and sharing energy information. And as Zuckerberg says, you know, his goal is a more and open and connected society will create a stronger economy. But also, I think, you know, uh, emphasis would be, in my view, on a better economy and a more equal economy. I mean, you're looking at all the stuff that's happening around the world, how people are sharing tools. And, you know, we're, we're clearly shifting from this place of where everything was concentrated on profit and growth and industry and industrial, you know, to the next level of interconnecting and creating a valuable ecosystem. And this, in my view, could be the role for Brazil in the world, because clearly that's not going to happen in America, as we could see the current election debates, you know, where climate change isn't even mentioned. I mean, this is appalling, isn't it, in my view. But also in Europe, you know, where we are completely stuck with regulation and, and with trying to uh, change the system to go forward. Uh, energy revolution will follow the communication revolution, as, as Jeremy Rifkin says in his great book, The Third Industrial Revolution. We're going to see an integrate where we can actually have something like the internet with energy, feeding energy back and forth to each other, generating profit from this, but also having the users become contributors and, and, and participants in this. Uh, distributed energy, distributed media, distributed business, that is our future. And it's clearly, as Marshall McLuhan says, this could be quite chaotic because, you know, being a decentralized world is, is different. It's going to take a lot more energy to organize it uh, and to, to uh, filter the chaos. And uh, so... Brazil, I think, um, has a very special position here. I think Brazil should adopt the motto of Bhutan, which is not about gross domestic or national product, but about gross national happiness. I think this would be a great headline for uh, for Brazil, you know, to look at uh, to look at this. I mean, they even have a happiness commission in Bhutan. Check out the quote down here; it's uh, quite mind-boggling. So, bottom line is, I think we're going to have a global village. We're going to have an, an uh, a system that's switching to an ecosystem from the ecosystem or we'll have a global desert or rather a global black hole that is our alternative it's time to hit this button so i hope to see you at this event in sao paulo on november 5th and uh, thanks for everyone for putting this together for gilson schwartz and everyone else and it will be a great pleasure to see all of you there thanks very much for tuning in